There is a particular Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom the Quran has given a very noticeable amount of attention to. His name was the most repeated name of any Prophet, despite there being Prophets who are perhaps greater than him, like the Prophet of Allah Ibrahim, the Prophet of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But in fact, the Quran not only discusses his life, but his birth and the events that took place that led up to his birth as well. We have knowledge, I mean, of, of his mother, of his sister, we have knowledge of his breastfeeding years, we have knowledge of his youth, his manhood, we, we even have knowledge of his marriage, how it happened, and even the, the dowry that he paid. The Quran has given us knowledge of all of these things. He is a prophet whose name was repeated no less than 183 times in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his story is scattered, dispersed, mentioned in the Quran in no less than 25 different parts. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had even described to us his very appearance and his physical construct. He is none other than the Prophet of Allah Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said three things about this Prophet that was not said about any other Prophet in the Quran. Description number one, Allah said about him, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي I have cast love over you, O Musa. Meaning, everyone who would see Prophet Musa immediately loved him. The second unique description that came about Prophet Musa was, وَاصْطَنَعْتُكَ I have prepared you for myself. And the third of those characteristics or descriptions is so that you may be brought up under my eye. Musa is being told that he was created by Allah to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is a category of human beings, the allies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom Allah chooses, whom Allah defends, whom Allah supports whom Allah nurtures and prepares them for his divine self. Therefore, no part, no part of Prophet Musa was for dunya, for this world. His heart, his soul, his essence, his ambitions, his hopes, his fear, his turning, his yearning, they were all entirely for the sake of Allah. Each chapter of his life was divinely planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prepare Musa to be for Allah and Allah alone. Look at the words of Shaykh al-Sa'di speaking about this ayah, I have prepared you for myself. Shaykh al-Sa'di, he said, he says, when a person wishes to prepare someone whom he dearly loves and desires to bring him up to the levels of perfection, such a person will exert all of his effort and he will do all what he can to help him attain this level of perfection. And so Shaykh Asadi he says, can you imagine therefore the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most able, the, the most generous, when he has taken it upon himself to develop a person whom he has selected for himself from creation. What will Allah do for such a person? I have prepared you for myself, Allah said about Prophet Musa. When did Prophet Musa, by the way, hear these beautiful and comforting words? He heard them during one of the loneliest, loneliest times in his life after he had escaped his home city. And during the darkest portion of the night, it was just him and his righteous wife, carrying with them hardly any luggage whatsoever. They were so lightly prepared and so poor that when Musa saw a glimmer of light in the distance, what did he say to his wife? He said, stay here, oh my wife, stay here. I, I perceive what seems to be a fire. Perhaps I can bring you a torch or find at the fire some, some guidance. Allahu Akbar. So they really possessed nothing. Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, he makes his way towards this light, not knowing that he was approaching the biggest moment in his life, which would change his future, his life and his afterlife forever. 
Little did he know that he was making his way towards an appointment with the King of Kings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he was about to hear the very voice of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He arrives and here Prophet Musa hears his name being called out. Ya Musa innani an Allah, O oh Musa, indeed, I am Allah. SubhanAllah. At this moment, Musa is given the enormous task of being a prophet. And Musa was listening to the words of his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he spoke to Musa directly. And it was during this perfect night in Egypt and during that specific hour of the evening where Prophet Musa finally understood why he had been suffering for all those years leading up to the build-up or leading up to this moment that he was now experiencing before Allah. Consider with me the factors of difficulty Musa experienced. Prophet Musa was born with a death, death warrant to his name. Number two, he was due for a separation from the arms of his mother when he was still a newborn, where she felt compelled to put him in a box and lower him into the river Nile. Number three, this box would arrive at the doorstep of the tyrant himself, the pharaoh, where his wife would fall in love with Musa. And so Musa grew up within the palace of a tyrant and at his expenditure. Why was all of this happening to Musa? See, he didn't know. Point number four, consider the fact that later on, Prophet Musa والسلام, would accidentally claim the life of a man. During a scuffle that he saw him and another person having, and he would flee Egypt in fear after having been told that, and for the second time in his life, that his life is at risk. Behind him were the authorities, and ahead of him was a completely unknown future. Number five, Musa would experience tremendous fatigue, starvation. He fled Egypt and he would work as a laborer for 10 consecutive years after being raised in the palace of a king just before that. And then afterwards he would set off with his wife walking towards an unknown future. Suffering, fatigue, hardship. That was the summary of the life of Musa leading up to this moment and now he is listening to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, up until this conversation with Allah, Musa had no idea why all of this had happened to him. But now all of a sudden it was, it was making sense. These different shades of hardship that Musa was put through, they were not accidental. And they were not because Allah was punishing him. Now Allah has given him the answer. Why you had gone through all of this, O Musa? Allah said to him, nafsi. I have prepared you for myself. Allahu Akbar. During this glorious and breathtaking conversation between man and the Lord of man, Allah gave Prophet Musa a summary of his entire life to show him how every phase of his life was divinely planned, starting from his birth, separation from his mother and the events that Musa was far too young to remember. Here, dear brothers and sisters, are the words that Prophet Musa heard. Are you ready to hear them? And as you hear them, I just want you to try and imagine the roller coaster of emotions that Prophet Musa must have experienced. As he hears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king of the heavens and the earth, Allah the creator, the first, the last, Allah, narrating to him the story of his life. Imagine how weird that would be and amazing. Allah said, O oh Musa, your request has been granted. And we have shown our favor upon you yet another time. When we inspired your mother to do what we inspired her to do, when we said to your mother, put him inside of a box and then place it onto the river and the river will then throw it on the bank and there an enemy of mine and an enemy of his will take him. That is the Pharaoh. And I cast the garment of love over you in order for you to be brought up under my eye. Remember when your sister went and she said, shall I direct you to someone who can nurse baby Musa? 
Shall I guide you to someone who can nurse this baby? That was your sister speaking. فَرَجَعْنَاكَ إِلَىٰ أُمِّكَ And therefore we returned you back to your mother. كَيْ تَقَرَّ عَيْنُهَا وَلَا تَحْزَنْ So that her eye may cool and not grieve whatsoever. وَقَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا فَنَجَّيْنَاكَ مِنَ الْغَمْبَ We saved you from the retaliation. وَفَتَنَّاكَ فُتُونًا And we tested you with severe tests. Allah continues, فَلَبِثْتَ سِنِينَ فِي أَهْلِ مَدْيَنْ ثُمَّ جِئْتَ عَلَىٰ قَدَرِي يَا مُوسَىٰ And you remained for some years among the people of Madian. He was working. Then you came here at the decreed time, O oh Musa, Allahu Akbar. Then Allah said, وَاصْطَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِي And I have prepared you for myself. لا إله إلا الله How was Musa feeling? When he heard these words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, although he did not see it at the time of his many hardships, but every phase of hardship was made to take place because Allah was preparing Musa for a great level to be Allah's and Allah's alone. And I ask, what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do for a person whom he prepares for himself? The answer to this question is the biography of Prophet Musa. Allah will be with this person in every one of the steps of their life. Even if these steps are steep, Allah will be with them till this person arrives at the gates of Jannah. Now, with all of this said, the question that naturally follows is, uh, what about us? I mean, how can we receive a portion of what Musa received? In other words, how can we also be a people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses and prepares for himself so that our life becomes purely about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore he is with us in every step of the way till we also get to Jannah. What do we need to do? And the reason I mention this dear brothers and sisters is because during these times of fitna, these times of tribulation, confusion, worldwide hardship for Muslims, how can we as individuals ensure that our hardship is not going to waste? How can we ensure that these hardships are signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing us for greatness as well in both worlds? And to answer that question, we will point out several key features of Prophet Musa, amongst the many, that qualified him for the station of nafsi. I have prepared you for myself. Take a look at several characteristics in the life of Musa and then ask yourself, how am I going to adapt them into mine? Number one, knowledge. Musa's knowledge of Allah and his deen was enormous. And speaking about the knowledge of Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, remember when we gave Musa the scripture and the furqan, the differentiation between right and wrong, that perhaps you would be guided. So this is an ayah that attests to the reality that Prophet Musa was a person of knowledge. A clear sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for a person is that he inspires him, inspires her to tread the path of knowledge. And that is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as Bukhari and Muslim narrate on the authority of Muawiyah, whenever Allah Almighty wants good for a person, he will give him understanding in the religion. Musa's desire to learn was absolutely remarkable. In fact, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa that there is a righteous man who is based at the junction of the two seas, and he has knowledge of certain matters that you don't, what did Musa do? Musa instantly packed his bags and set out on a journey to find him. And Musa, he said, displaying his determination, I will not give up traveling until I reach the junction of the two seas. Or perhaps I will spend years upon years in traveling. Ya Allah, Allahu Akbar. So don't say that Prophet Musa received revelation from Allah and that is why he had knowledge. Musa also made an effort to learn. And after an exhausting journey, which Allah documents in the Qur'an, he finally met this individual at the junction of the two seas in a display of remarkable prophetic humility. Musa said to this man who was inferior to him, can I follow you so that you teach me from what you have been taught from sound judgment? La ilaha illallah. So brother, sister, from this moment in time, this very second that you are listening to these words, create a plan for learning. Create a plan to study and to remove from yourself the veils of ignorance. Consult the people of goodness, and there are many around you. Ask them, how do I devise a plan so that I can become at least a student of a student of knowledge or more? 
the second of the characteristics of Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that qualified him for this level of I have prepared you for myself is his dedication to the many forms of worship, ibadah. Musa was a man of worship. The very first instruction that Musa received from Allah was what? Worship me and establish the prayer for my remembrance. Subhanallah, the very first commandment he heard from Allah was pray, worship. It is key for a person who wants to be chosen and prepared and nurtured by Allah. And shortly, by the way, before the Pharaoh would be drowned in the sea, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa and his brother Harun the following commandment. Listen carefully and underline the key word. He said to Musa and Harun, provide homes for your people in Egypt and make your homes into places of worship and establish the prayer and give good news to the believers. Ah, so subhanallah, a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for himself is not an average person with respect to worship. It's impossible. They can't be. Rather, the, the signs of perpetual prayer and extra fasting and dua and dhikr and tears and hope, and recitation of Quran, you cannot miss it from the life of this person, the appearance of this person, the conduct of this person. That's quality number two, worship. Number three that we see in the life of Musa, the third characteristic, he was a man who always acknowledged his errors. He was not afraid to confront his blind spots. Prophet Musa was never shy. He was never hesitant to acknowledge where he made a mistake. And he would retreat to the truth immediately when presented with it. And this is undoubtedly one of the most essential characteristics of a prophet or a leader or a mother who will produce revivalists or any individual whom Allah has chosen and prepared for himself. They're not afraid to say, Astaghfirullah, I've made a mistake. See, when Musa was separating a fight between two, he underestimated his own strength. What did Musa say? At once, Musa said, Ahadha min amali shaytan. This is from the work of shaytan. Innahu aduwum mudillum mubeen. Surely shaytan is an enemy openly leading people astray. So Prophet Musa said, My Lord, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. And so Allah forgave him. Indeed, Allah is the forgiving, the merciful. Subhanallah. Instantly squaring up to his mistake, asking Allah for forgiveness, apologizing when erring. And thus Allah chose him for himself. And on another occasion, he came across another two men who were fighting. And one of whom, by the way, was the same from the last fight. And when he was on the verge of involving himself, one of the two men said to Musa, Ya Musa, Ah, so what happened when Musa heard those words? At once Musa, he, he, he stopped in his tracks. He withdrew himself from the scene. Musa was chosen by Allah for many characteristics, one of which is the fact that he was not afraid to acknowledge his errors. And these, by the way, they wouldn't be the only examples of how Musa retreated to what is right. How can we forget about how angry Prophet Musa was when he saw his people having returned to idolatry and worshipping a golden calf? Although it was just a few days ago when, when he left them. Musa, he threw the scriptures that Allah had given him just from anger and just shock. He, he just threw the, the scriptures on the ground and, and he grabbed his older brother by his hair and by his beard, although his brother was older than Musa, and he began dragging him. Prophet Harun pleaded with Musa, explaining to him that it, it's not his fault and that he tried his best to prevent them from worshipping the calf. But, and he said to his brother Musa, the people oppressed me. So don't let the enemies gloat over my suffering and don't place me with the wrongdoing people, Allah. When Musa heard this, what did he do? Musa's heart broke to the truth, acknowledged his mistake, repented to Allah. He said, my Lord, forgive me, forgive my brother and allow us to enter into your mercy. And you are the most merciful of those who show mercy. Musa would then kneel down to the ground and he would pick up the scrolls from the floor that he threw. And that was the end of the problem. 
See, brother, sister, a sign that Allah has chosen you for himself and is preparing you for himself is that your heart falls into submission whenever it hears the term, this is halal, this is haram, this is doubtful, this is not ours, this is not from our ummah, this is the obligation, this is the prohibition. Your heart submits. When you are advised with good manners and with evidence, that you rush to make amendments to your relationships, your secret habits, your secret conversations, your business dealings, even if they are enormous, your manners, your physical appearance, your dress code, your social media, you submit to the truth. Another one of the hallmarks in the life of Prophet Musa that made him a person who was qualified to be prepared by Allah for Allah was his patience. It was exemplary, Allahu Akbar. From the beginning of his life to the very end, you can summarize the life of Musa by saying he was a man of patience. In fact, when our Messenger ﷺ, he would suffer, he would say, May Allah have mercy on my brother Musa. He was, he suffered more than this and he showed patience. Our Prophet ﷺ would console himself sometimes with the difficult circumstances by remembering the seerah of Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Where, where am I going by the way with all of this? What's the point of mentioning this? Despite all of the happenings of today that break the heart of every wakeful and conscious Muslim, we are to remember that above the universe is a Lord who is watching and a Lord who is allowing matters to unfold in the ways which they are. But why are we experiencing this worldwide trial? The answer is in the story that you just heard, nafsi, I have prepared you for myself. Prophet Musa was one of the dearest of creation to Allah. And this Ummah, dear brothers and sisters, this nation of Muslims, is also the dearest of all nations to Allah. The fact that Allah allowed Prophet Musa to suffer so much despite his love for him is a clear indication that suffering at times is a preparation, not hatred. Ah, so we have just understood that for those who Allah loves, they may come hand in hand. Love of Allah and test, they may come hand in hand. And this is how we must see our difficult situation as Muslims today. As Allah said to Musa, in order that you may be brought up under my eye, we are being brought back to our senses as Muslims, dear brothers and sisters, and Allah is raising us under his eye. Our hardships as Muslims, undoubtedly, they are like none other. But why? Because the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said about you, said about us, he said, you are the last of 70 nations which Allah has created. However, you are the greatest and most honorable of these nations in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa was being prepared for greatness and this ummah is being prepared for greatness. The same way that Musa was separated from his mother, from a very young age, separated from his relatives, separated from his loved ones, we will also perhaps at times be separated from people and places that we love, even if those places happen to be something as beautiful and as dear to us as Al-Aqsa in Palestine. But Musa was reunited with his loved ones. And we too will be reunited with our loved ones. Whether it happens today or tomorrow, it is the promise of Allah. In the same way that Musa was thrown into the river Nile, we will also be thrown into the rivers of hardship, maybe the rivers of ridicule, the rivers of discrimination at times. But the shore for Musa was near, and our shore is just as near as well. Allah has full power and control over his affairs, but most people may don't know.